Get on the train Before it leaves the station The truth train is coming Gonna run them down Run them down Hello everybody, how you doing? We're here today talking about Len Kaczynski You know, that guy Right? So <clears throat> Decision came down today From the Wisconsin Supreme Court he is suspended for three years from being able to be a, a, a volunteer judge, which, because he's not currently, he's been, he's already kind of been uh, outed as a judge there in Fox Crossing. He's not actually a judge right now, so they've restricted him from even being a volunteer judge or a, or a you know an alternate judge or anything like that. And for three years, and and they've also added the fact that, and if he ever does want to take any job as a judge ever again, he has to petition that court first and he has to prove his fitness to them it's interesting so so we got I, I basically went through the the part of the report where I went through the complaints of what you know what he had been doing to this young lady this clerk there in Fox Crossing so I pulled out a bunch of bits I didn't want to just go and read the whole thing I just tried to pull out some some interesting bits to kind of have people get some of the gist of what was going on uh, in this and why this happened and that sort of stuff so all right here we go we'll get to it <coughs> judge kaczynski's emails and his disclosure about knowing the location of mb's mother upset mb sufficiently that they led her to lodge a complaint against judge kaczynski with the village's human Resi resources manager lisa malone the village is like the the place where they where the courthouse. I guess it's like a civic center type thing. Anyway, it's called the village. It has you know so there's a managers and human resources manager and that sort of stuff. So after the complaint, village manager Jeffrey Sturgill had a telephone conversation with, with Judge Kaczynski in which he advised Judge Kaczynski that MB was overwhelmed by Judge Kaczynski's non-work communications. Sturgill believed that Judge Kaczynski agreed to change his behavior because he did not want to lose MB as an employee. On May 4th of 2017, the day after Sturgill spoke with Judge Kaczynski, Malone met with Judge Kaczynski and, M uh, and MB. Malone explained to Judge Kaczynski that the concerns with his behavior. During the meeting, the participants developed a number of guidelines, including that no personal information about colleagues would be shared on social media, that all phone and email communications would be related to business matters, and that Judge Kaczynski would limit his visits to the office to one time per week, because there's only one night a week he would come in to be judge, and so they were just wanting to limit it to that one day. The, judge, the Judicial Conduct Panel found that at the conclusion of this meeting, it should have been clear to Judge Kaczynski that he was expected to limit his communications with MB to work-related matters. Judge Kaczynski, however, ignored the guidelines that had, that had been developed. Indeed, his subsequent conduct indicated that he was upset as a result of the meeting and was determined to express his displeasure to MB and to reject any limitation of communications to work-related matters. On the following Monday, just three days after the meeting, Judge Kaczynski sent, sent MB an email that began with personal information about what Judge Kaczynski had done over the weekend. On three occasions during that week, Judge Kaczynski came into the municipal, municipal court offices. He sat close to MB's desk facing her. He did nothing except tap his pen and make cat noises. On one visit, Judge Kaczynski continued this extremely odd behavior for 45 minutes. During one of those visits, Judge Kaczynski also told MB a story about a dog being raped and then repeated the story a second time. On Thursday of that week, Judge Kaczynski sent an email to MB discussing their personal relationship that made it clear he would not abide by any work-related limitations. He claimed that some short general conversation about interpersonal difficulties is really work related as we have to get along well as personal and professional friends to do our best. He also referenced an evaluation of MB that he would be completing in the next week. Really, Lynn? Yeah, that's real subtle, dude. Really subtle. Jeez. 
On Thursday, May 24th of 2017, Judge Kaczynski sent another email to MB in which he inquired about having a party to celebrate his overcoming a medical problem that the two of them had discussed at the end of 2016. MB replied that they did not need to have a meeting about such a party, but Judge Kaczynski continued to ask for her input about such a party, including through an email sent to her home email account. In that same email, Judge Kaczynski again brought up their personal relationship, acknowledging that it was strained, which concerned him. Uh, he asked if there was something either of them could do that would bring back the happy relationship that, that existed from May 2016 to March 2017. I don't know. One suggestion, Lynn. Quick, quick you know, acting like a creepy stalker, maybe, uh, just a, just a, just a thought, anyway, <laughs> MB sent a response email that having Judge Kaczynski come into the office to discuss plans for this party puts me on the spot, which she did not want. This prompted a reply from Judge Kaczynski. In the reply, Judge Kaczynski acknowledged that he had made her uncomfort uncomfortable and lamented the loss of their discussions of personal matters. It's like, like, this is odd to me. I mean, look, this is just somebody, this is just like an, a kind of an acquaintance in his, in your life or whatever. I mean, this is not somebody, he's just way too interpersonally like f focused and connected on MB. It's like, and, but he tries to maintain this facade that it's all just perfectly harmless, normal friend stuff. Like, right? Am I right? I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know over in the chat there. Anyway. So. Um, I hope I hope I have not blown that forever. Early, uh, early the next day, which was the Friday prior to Memorial Day, Judge Kaczynski sent another email stating that he had decided not to have the party, but suggesting that they and their families could have a get together at some point over the summer <laughs> that same day village manager Sturgill learned of judge Kaczynski's ongoing attempts to initiate personal non-work conversations with MB Sturgill and the village's attorney had a telephone conversation with judge Kaczynski explained potential violations of the village's policy prohibiting harassment in the workplace advised him of the need to maintain professional decorum at work and told him to cease communicating with MB about personal matters. Judge Kaczynski sent MB an email over the ensuing weekend, in which he stated that he wanted to hit the reset button. He claimed that it had not been clear to him that MB wished to avoid after-hours activities with him. Are you kidding me? My main concern is that a work-only discussion policy should not preclude normal water cooler discussion of things like the Packers, Badgers, child graduations, children's having, children having children, recent vacation adventures, etc. I need to know what you consider to be over the line. Walking on eggshells during what should be a relaxed, casual conversation is not good for productivity or mental health. Your ideas on this are welcome. Judge Kaczynski also complained about the fact that MB had defriended him on Facebook, encouraged her to reverse that decision, and stated that he wanted to start over with new rules. He claimed that being able to view her personal Facebook page allowed him to know what was going on in her life that might impact her job performance and avoided the need for him to ask her the usual question about how vacation or weekend went. Wait, Lynn, aren't you complaining about the fact that that's what you want to be part of your casual conversations but now you now you're saying you need her to friend you on Facebook so you can find out these things I mean yeah super creepy dude way creepy you creep this lady out Lynn way creeped out I don't, I, I don't know how you could fail to realize that but anyway when village manager Sturgill lean, learned of Judge Kaczynski's email over the Memorial Day weekend, he sent a letter to Judge Kaczynski pointing out that he had violated the village's direction not to discuss the personal relationship with MB and reminded him that he was not to engage in any communications with her that went beyond work matters. Approximately two weeks later, Judge Kaczynski sent an, 
<laughs> right? Jeez, uh, good old Lenny. You know, he's a uh, he's a piece of work. Definitely a piece of work. A particularly disturbing event occurred on July 17th of 2017 while alone with MB in the municipal court office, Judge Kaczynski lunged over MB's desk, knocking some items off of it. While he did so, Judge Kaczynski whispered to MB, are you afraid of me now? This conduct frightened MB. The Judicial Conduct Panel found that this action by Judge Kaczynski was an attempt to intimidate MB into acquiescing in his fixation on a personal relationship with her. Along with the fact that he he actually at one point was threatening that he would fire her. That he was gonna fire her. That it would be that 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 she had created such a toxic environment, work environment by by refusing to you know, have a personal level relationship with him. That he, he was saying she was detrimental to the to the situation and that he would fly, he would exercise his right to terminate her employment. And yeah, and the in the and the, the the judicial panel just noted that he believed he could fire her when he was saying those things. He goes further as to like badger her, you know, or well he's he's writing all this stuff to the the uh, village human relations uh, person and he's basically making all these 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 grandiose statements I mean it's wild it's weird I mean he, he clearly just has no clue you know even with more and more people getting involved in it and, and trying to tell him you know like dude you're going way off the deep end here and he's just ignoring it you know it's like wow all right, so this is an excerpt from an email that Lynn sent to MB. In short, if you want to restore a happy workplace, the first step is to stand up on your own and not use the administration as a crutch. I can overlook what I consider poor judgment in handling a situation. I cannot tolerate a weakling unwilling to have free and open discussions with the boss or insubordination. I mean... Are you kidding me, dude? No. Look, I have never in my life had a boss that expected the things that this man expects. Never in my life have I had a boss that wanted to, that insisted on being that much a part of my life. You know? It's bizarre and weird. Creepy as hell. in this, uh, you know, judgment from the Wisconsin Supreme Court here regarding Lynn, but this is all basically the fact finding from the Judicial Commission, um, or Judicial Conduct Panel, so the next day after his outburst, Judge Kaczynski sent a letter to MB stating that his October 27, 2017 letter of reprimand had been intended to be a teaching tool to catch your attention. The email contained the following statements. By this time next week, some things are going to happen that will cause a lot of fire and fury at the municipal building. No, I am not resigning. Just be psychologically re prepared. Have a good weekend. The Judicial Conduct Panel found that this was not related to the work of the municipal court. It found that the email, including the reference to fire and fury, was so disturbing to MB and to village officials that the village police were notified. When the village police chief interviewed Judge Kaczynski about the email, he giggled more than once in response to the police chief's question. He's giggling. Yeah. Two weeks later, Judge Kaczynski sent an email to MB with a link to a newspaper article about a dispute between a circuit court judge and a clerk in another county. Referencing that dispute, the email included the comment that it could be worse. The judicial, contact, the judicial Conduct Panel found that this email was not necessary or pertinent to the functioning of the municipal court. In June of 2018, a Winnebago County Circuit Court conducted a de novo review of the temporary injunction. It affirmed the harassment injunction and extended it until May 1st, 2019. 
During the hearing, the circuit court judge advised Judge Kaczynski that the court was issuing an injunction prohibiting any conduct or contact between you and MB, other than that absolutely necessitated through the course of your employment. The written injunction ordered, order directed Judge Kaczynski to cease harassment of MB, to have no contact with her outside of work, and to have no contact with MB's family members. The written injunction further specified that all communications between respondent and petitioner shall be limited to what is necessary to perform the functions of the village of Fox Crossing Municipal Court. It further explained that communications related to the personal relationship or personal rapport between respondent and petitioner are not included in the operation of the court and are prohibited under this section. So he keeps getting it laid out for him over and over again by higher and higher authorities. Is any wonder what, how what happened to Brendan happened? Right. In addition, because Judge Kaczynski's misconduct demonstrates that he currently lacks the judicial temperament and the insight into his actions that are required for a judge to preside over and manage a court, we also require him to petition this court and successfully demonstrate to us that he is fit to serve as a reserve municipal judge before he may request an appointment to serve as a reserve municipal judge from the chief judge of the applicable judicial district. It is ordered that Leonard D. Kaczynski is suspended from eligibility for appointment as a reserve municipal court judge for a period of three years commencing July 3rd, 2018. It is further ordered that before Leonard D. Kaczynski may request appointment as a reserve municipal court judge by the chief judge of the applicable judicial administrative district under Wisconsin statute 800.065, he must first file a petition with this court and demonstrate through appropriate evidence his fitness to serve as a reserve municipal court judge. So, that's it. He's officially suspended. And honestly, when I look at this and I and I see this where they're, you know, the way they've worded it that he needs to petition them first and prove to them that he is fit, I think that's basically them, you know, in no uncertain terms saying, yeah, we think you're getting a little bit loose in the head there, Lynn. So, yeah, if you want to serve as a judge again, you're going to have to come and show us that you're fit to do so. So I think that that, I think that makes this all a little more permanent um, than it might seem. But um, because I don't think his, I don't think he's getting any more, um, I, I don't, I don't imagine this problem is going to get better. I imagine that this problem he's having is only going to get worse. Uh, and it probably is a symptom of him getting old. Uh, some kind of mental condition uh, or of some sort. So, anyway, that's what happened to Lynn Kaczynski. All right, so my few little thoughts on this. Lynn, maybe you needed a drug problem. Maybe you might have been able to get off a little easier like Kratz did if you had a drug problem. So, remember that for the future, Lynn. Just a pointer. Uh, drug problem might help you. Uh, get less suspension time. Uh, you know, that's what we learned with Kratz. He only got like, what, six months, four months, six months, whatever it was he got after, you know, all the things that he was sexting and everything, the domestic violence, you know, victims and everything. So, um, either that or, or the courts in Wisconsin are starting to realize that there's an entire world looking at them and every time the lawyer for Brendan Dassey pops up in the news in this embarrassing way. Maybe they just were getting tired of that. They felt it was an, it was enough was enough, and that's why they wanted him out. I don't know. What he did is actually, even though it's creepy and uh, weird, and I f totally feel sorry for what that clerk had to go through, but it's rather tame compared to what Ken Kratz did in a lot of ways, really, you know? So, I don't know, just something that occurred to me. Anyway, so, 
so Lynn's going to be, you know, he's not really, he's not going to be a judge anymore. He's already been removed from his previous judgeship. So, but now he's not going to be able to even be like a volunteer judge or a, or a, an alternate judge or anything. He can't serve as a judge at all now in any of those capacities um, for three years. And even then, no matter what, he has to petition the, this, this, the Wisconsin Supreme Court again before he will be allowed to become, to, to be a judge again. They want to make sure he's fit for it. If if the if, so, basically, he has to get their approval if he wants to be a judge again. And you got to imagine they put that stipulation in there for a reason. Like they have concerns about his ability to be able to continue being a judge, right? So I would say it's probably not very likely that they will ever sign off on him becoming a judge again. You know, so. I don't know, just some of my thoughts about it. But anyways, just wanted to share some of this with you guys here today. Um, uh, hopefully we'll see you guys here in another video tomorrow or the next day. Uh, actually, tomorrow, actually. I will be on with uh, Steve Rado from Eagle Nation Cycles along with two of the hostages from the um, uh, the hostage situation uh, in 2015 at Eagle Nation Cycles. So uh, we're going to have, like I said, the owner, Steven Arado, and two of the hostages from that day. Um, we'll talk to them live tomorrow. So if you guys want, tune in for that. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe, and we'll see you.